Hey everybody, Fred here from plcgurus.net. So you're following along in our C Sharp HMI video series here and looking at how we can develop our own custom C Sharp HMI applications. And we can really expand this into large scale SCADA type applications as well if we're ready to do that heavy lifting. So what I wanna do in this video is I want to continue to develop our little test project here. Uh, in the last video, you'll know that we set up a continuous read on an analog value, making use of the multi-threading capability of C Sharp. And in there, we were performing continuous reads at a sample rate of one second. Now, we could get a lot more aggressive on that sample rate if we wanted to. Um, we could really dial that back. And we provided a mechanism in our code to easily change the sample rate or the read rate that we, we were doing on the tag. So in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna show you a really cool way that you can quickly pull two things. One, your CPU state. So this is your, your status, basically the indicators on your processor itself. So your status, your major minor faults, and your key position as well as a handful of CPU properties. So for instance, the program name, the model name, firmware version, product type, code, serial number, EDS, all of that good stuff. And InGear makes it very, very easy to do this. So what I wanna do is, is get going maybe with the CPU properties in this video, and then in the next video, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to code the CPU state properties. So I'm excited to get going, let's get started. So to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and massage our little test project that we've been building in the last two videos. So I'm just gonna do maybe rearrange some of these objects a little bit, just to create a little bit of space for ourselves. So I'm gonna just do things like drag this down. And you know what, I might throw this window up in here, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And let's expand it out. Well, we don't wanna make it that small. We don't wanna get a scroll bar in there. So let's make it at least big enough where we don't get scroll bars. And you know what, let's drag up this connection state um, and disconnect in state and our timestamp variable. Let's go ahead and do that. And that looks pretty good there. So, so I wanna go ahead and make use of something known as a group box. So let's scroll down here and let's find the group box object. So these are alphabetical, so it should be right here. Okay, and group boxes are a nice way to, I would say, categorize or group, if you will, um, common type properties or elements or objects in your application. So let's go ahead and call this one, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one CPU state. And let's go ahead and copy and paste. So I'm just selecting it, Control C, Control V. And I'm gonna drag this one down and let's expand this one a little bit deeper. And I'm gonna call this one CPU properties. And again, it's the properties panel that we are gonna focus on today, but I think we can get some of the, the GUI objects roughed in while we do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag out a label and let's call this label the okay status. Oops, there we go. And you know what, I want to set up a text box. So let's find the text box object in our toolbox. And I'm gonna drag that up and notice how we're self aligning and, and snapping, which is a nice tool, right? So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and let's make sure that we wanna get that little purple line there. So the text in the text box is aligned with the okay status. You see that there, that purple line? So that looks pretty good. And you know what, I'm gonna change the the property, the read-only property on this, because we just want to make these read-only. And right now, why don't we go ahead, maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger, why not? We got room. So yeah, let's just, well, let's use the space. We might have to go this way a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and do a copy. So I'm just holding my Control key to select both of those components. I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V, and now notice I have a complete copy of that. And then maybe I'll do it one more time so that we can get the three elements. And now we have to do a little massaging here um, just to make everything fit. Uh, let's see, does that look good? Again, this is kind of massage work, um, but 
Maybe we'll make this a little bit smaller. And that looks pretty good there. So I'm going to just make that smaller, make this one a little bit bigger. And maybe we'll go in here and edit these labels now. So I'm going to go ahead and call this our major slash minor faults. Hopefully it'll all fit. Uh, okay, so let's make these a little bit smaller then. Um, let's go to here. Let's do that. Okay, and this one's going to be our key position. All right, so those are the three CPU state properties that we're going to look at. And now I'm going to go ahead and just copy all of these objects down into CPU property and we're going to we're going to edit them. So we're just we're just really trying to save some time here, aren't we? We want to have a time saver, so I'm going to do that one more time in here because there's going to be seven properties that we're actually going to be um, making use of here. That's six and it looks like I can just grab one more. We'll copy that and there is our seventh. Okay. We're getting somewhere. And maybe we'll move this over here and this over here so it looks reasonably centered with the rest of it. All right, so we're looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and edit these labels now so we can give them a name. So I'm just going to give them, this is just the text labels now, right? So this will be the program name. This will be the model. This will be the firmware version. Whoops. This will be the product type. This will be the product code. Let's put a serial number there, might as well. Let's grab the serial number information off our processor. And you know what, why not the EDS file name? Let's grab these seven. And the nice thing is, I mean, we're doing it for one processor, but think about this. Now, we have a very concise mechanism to pull for our CPU property. So we could create, in effect, if we wanted to, if you had a plant full of, of PLCs out there and you wanted to do an inventory and be able to monitor, monitor all of these processors in a given snapshot, we could we could simply set all of these little group boxes up for all our different uh, PLCs in, in our plant and really get a, a dashboard view of what's happening as far as firmware goes, all that stuff. So, I mean, there, there are many applications for this little project that we're doing to expand this into a larger scale or larger scope type project, okay? All right, so I think we've got all of the GUI components roughed in. Now we need to give our text boxes some names. And again, typically what you want to do is you want to scroll up to the name field here and give these things some meaningful names. And I always like to preface the names with the type of object. So for instance, a text box gives me a TXT because when we're coding on the back end of this, the IntelliSense will automatically order them in alphabetical order. And if you do this, it follows a convention where things will show up in the order that you want them to show up in. So from a IntelliSense perspective, it makes a lot of sense. So let's call this OK status. Oops, there we go. Let's call this one TXT. Uh, we'll just call it false. Let's just call this one false. We'll call this one TXT key position txt program name txt model txt firmware txt product type txt product code txt serial number and finally we'll call this one txt eds okay so now we've got all our text box labeled so we can access them in our back end code let's head on over to 
the backend code and start coding in these properties. So to get going, we're going to need to add a couple more tags to hold our CPU properties and state values. So I'm going to create two new tags, private tag, and we'll call this one CPU info equals new tag. And I'll call this one private tag CPU state. And we'll just say this is going to be a new tag. And these are special tags that we're going to do. InGear, like I said, InGear has a special mechanism by which it's very, very easy to call this information up from your a given processor you have in the field. Okay, so, and I'll show you that just in a second. So maybe we'll start adding some comments. So this, these are the tags to hold CPU state and property information. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to go down to the connect method. So we, we've built in some robustness, I would say, in our connect disconnect methods in the last video. So in here, now what I want to do is I want to make a call to read the CPU properties after we've confirmed that we are in fact connected to the CPU, okay? And if you're not sure where I am, please do watch the previous videos. We are building on previous videos here. So I'm gonna call this method. So we're gonna put this all in its own method. I'm gonna call this read CPU properties. And it's gonna be a void type method. And notice we're getting an error. And if you hover and we hit the little fly out, we wanna go ahead and generate that method. And you can see it automatically generates it for us. And now we can go in here and start coding the method to do the actual CPU property read. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the code in and then I'll come back and explain what the different pieces are. So just bear with me, let's rough in this code and then we'll explain it. So you see we have our method now implemented for what we're going to do here at least in this video. And you can see here the special call to read the CPU info, info is this uh, dollar sign CPU underscore info. And like I say, this is a special call built into the InGear libraries that will read all of the CPU info as an array uh, as a string array. So you can see here, I'm making my plc.retake CPU info. And if I get a good read, I'm creating an array of strings, calling them plc properties. And I'm casting the CPU info, info dot value to a string array. So this is a cast type uh, call here. So you're casting this to a certain type, okay? And then I'm simply assigning each element of that array in that order or to the various uh, CPU properties text boxes in our GUI application over here. So everybody sees that, right? Good. And so that's about it. I mean, it's that easy. I know it's, it, it's mind boggling, isn't it? We've basically written a very compact piece of code and can effectively read in the CPU info from our processor. Pretty cool. So I guess the next thing to try is really to test this. Let's try it. So let's go ahead and run our application in debug mode. And there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and just open up the program again, which is just a simple program. It's got nothing in it really other than our analog value that we're attempting to read in continuously here. And let's go ahead and make a connection to the CPU. And look, good, bang. 
So right away, okay, so we have to massage this a little bit. Actually, let's do that right now because that looks kind of ugly. I don't like the way it's getting uh, clipped off here. So I'm just going to close that. And let's go back and to the form. And let's just go ahead maybe and move this a little. Well, let's just move it a little bit. How's that? That looks, that should do it. Okay, maybe we can make this a little bit wider just to give us a little bit more room. All right, good. Let's try that again. Let's run it. Let's bring it up here. And let's go ahead and connect. And notice we're connected and we're reading and we are continuously reading the values every second. That's our sample rate. And look, we read in the CPU properties. We see the, pro the program name is called Test Project. We see the model of the type of uh, Control Logics controller I'm using here in the lab. It's a 1756L61. The firmware version currently running in the processor. The product type, product code, the serial number, and the EDS file name. This is awesome. And we are reading tags continuously in our controller, aren't we? So I hope you have found this video informative. And again, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and populate the CPU state. But I think it's going to serve us well to create or, or populate these CPU values that's running in our sample thread here. Remember, we created a thread. Why not continuously pull as we're making our continuous reads here? And look at that CPU state in case somebody decides they want to, I don't know, move the key position to program mode. Or maybe somebody wants to, or maybe there's a fault in the system. We want to see that dynamically, okay? So that's the next video. Again, this is Fred. I hope you found this video informative. Please do head on over to our blog site and forums at https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net. Become a member of what is quickly becoming the largest and fastest growing community of professional engineers, technicians, and technologists who all share a passion for industrial automation and control systems. So come on over. Registration is free. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button, ring that bell, and all of that good stuff. So I'll see you in the next video. See you later. Thank you.